Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian, and this is the Drops episode for week eight of the fantasy season. Now, sometimes we have to make tough decisions that we may not enjoy, but sometimes we have to cut some players that previously were doing pretty well for us. If you have any of the players on this list, you might want to consider cutting them from your team. Before we get into the list, though, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Let's jump right into the video now, and let's start with the forwards that you should consider dropping from your team. And first on the list is Matt Boldy of the Minnesota Wild. And he's 75% rostered, but hasn't been that great this year. He's only 11 points in 18 games, which isn't terrible, but isn't particularly good. Has been ice cold as of late. Is playing on a line with Joel Eriksson, which is decent deployment. Is getting top power play time as well, but is just not doing anything with it. His in-depth stats aren't that nice to him either. His on-ice shooting percentage is perfectly normal and his shooting percentage isn't that low. So I don't have that much hope that Boldy really does that much better uh, to turn his season around completely. So if I'm in a shallower league and I have Matt Boldy, I'm probably dropping him, especially if there are guys that I put on my way to our videos that are just producing a lot more than Matt Boldy. It would be worth dropping him for one of those guys. If I'm in a deep league, it's gonna be pretty hard to drop Matt Boldy because he definitely still has the potential to put up a lot of points given his deployment. So for now, I might consider still holding him, but if he continues down this road, he will be a drop in those leagues as well. And then I have Gabriel Velarde of the Los Angeles Kings, and he went pointless in six straight games before finally scoring a goal in his previous game. Now, he has been now demoted back down to the third line, which is a spot that he was producing earlier in the year, but not being on the top line in L.A., definitely, definitely hurts his fantasy value. And to me, he's definitely a drop in shallower leagues at this point. He's still top power play though, so I'm not dropping him in all leagues, but in leagues where there's other pretty good players out there on the waiver wire, it's probably worth swapping him for somebody else. Then I have William Carlson of the Vegas Golden Knights, and him I'm dropping in a good amount of leagues at this point, because he had a very, very hot line with Riley Smith and Marcia so and they were absolutely going off. And it seems like they finally cooled down. And that's why now is the time to drop William Carlson. Then I have Arthur Kalia of the Los Angeles Kings. And I did recommend him a couple weeks ago because the LA Kings had pretty favorable schedules last week and the week before. But they don't really anymore. And Kalia is a fourth liner. So there's really no point of holding him on your team at this point. Then I have Victor Olofsson of the Buffalo Sabres, who's playing third line minutes in Buffalo with middle stat. It's not a great deployment, and he's not really producing that much, and that's why he's a drop in pretty much all leagues right now. Jumping into defenseman, first on this is Ivan Provorov of the Philadelphia Flyers. And earlier in the season, he was blocking a ridiculous amount of shots and was putting up some points. Pretty much all of that that I just said is not happening anymore. He's not blocking shots. He's no longer really putting up much points, and that's why he's a drop. Then I have John Klingberg of the Anaheim Ducks, and this guy is a must-drop at this point because he's just not doing anything. He was so bad that they took him off the top power play in Anaheim, which was the one reason that they actually signed John Klingberg in the first place. If you have Klingberg, drop him now for Cam Fowler because he's taken his spot on the top power play, and Fowler's actually looking really, really good on that unit. Then I have Bowen Byron, who is injured on the Colorado Avalanche, but even when he's healthy, he only plays PP2 and doesn't really put up a whole lot of peripherals, and he is super injury prone uh, as well. So if you do have him on an IR or IR plus spot, you might as well hold him. But if you don't have him on one of those spots, what are you doing? Seriously, consider dropping him. Or if you get another injury, you would consider replacing Bowen Byron with that injury. Then I have Connor Clifton of the Boston Bruins. I can't believe that he's up to 41% rostered. He's a third pairing defenseman. His minutes have gone down with everybody healthy in Boston. And yeah, he was putting up some pretty decent peripherals. I'll give him that. And also putting up a point every now and then. But now that he's third minute defenseman, his minutes have gone down significantly. And the peripherals have gone down with it. And that's why he's a drop. And then I have Damon Severson of the New Jersey Devils, and he was drafted in a lot of leagues this year. But I told you guys, don't draft Severson. Hamilton's going to have a nice rebound season, and Hamilton is doing very well, which is why Severson is a drop. Jumping into goalies now, and first on the list, I have Sergei Bobrovsky of the Florida Panthers, 89% rostered. And obviously, I'm not dropping Sergei Bobrovsky in super deep leagues. That doesn't make sense. There's probably no other goalies that remotely resemble the quality of Sergei Bobrovsky. If I'm in a shallower league, though, where there's actually pretty good goalies available, like a Vanacek or something, I'm definitely dropping Sergei Bobrovsky. This guy has been terrible, and it looks like Spencer Knight's going to continue to see more and more starts because he's doing a lot better than Bobrovsky at the moment. 
Then I have Carter Hart of the Philadelphia Flyers, who started off the season so incredibly strong, was the goaltending leader in like every single category. But the Flyers, like most people predicted, have slowed down. They're not winning as many games, and Carter Hart has been letting in a decent amount of goals, and his stats have not been that great. Again, if you're in a shallower league, there's probably a better goalie out there than Carter Hart, and that's why he's a draw. But if you're in a deeper league, there's probably nothing better out there than Carter Hart, and that's why you got to keep him and hope that he starts making some more saves. Hopefully, he turns it around a little bit. Then I have Casey DeSmith of the Pittsburgh Penguins, 20% rostered, and yes, he was making a bid for the starter position. However, the other night, Jari got a shutout and looked pretty good. Jari is definitely the starter in Pittsburgh, so there's not really a reason for 20% of you guys to be hanging on to Casey DeSmith. Drop him. And then I have Alex Nedeljkovic, 19% rostered, and Huso has dramatically outplayed Nedeljkovic this season and is getting the majority of the starts. Nedeljkovic, at this point, is only getting one out of every four starts or so, and there's not really a reason to hold on to him at this point. And then finally, I have Eric Kalogren of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and with Matt Murray healthy, he's not going to get a whole lot of starts, and especially Sam Sonov is probably going to return pretty soon as well, in which case he's going to get sent to the AHL. Really no reason to be holding Eric Coggren at this point. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you do want to take your support to the next level, the link to my Patreon is in the description below. And if you do want to take a look at some fantasy tip merchandise, such as this shirt, you can take a look at my store also in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tip.